everybody. We are in the African and Asian animal section today. Today I'm going to be briefly talking about the different animals that we have in this area. All of them are taxidermied except for the African elephant, which is a cast. So today we're talking about the um, lions over here on this side, and we have a mama lion and a daddy lion. One of the cool things about lions is that they live out on the savannas where there's a lot of tall grass, and the grass is what actually acts as their camouflage. They also do a lot of hunting, but you'd be surprised to know that it's actually the female or the mama lion that does the hunting for the pride. Um, pride's the name they call their family, and the cubs, um, when they're, they're born, the mama lions all have kind of a babysitting co-op and take care of them all. Daddy lion, on the other hand, his, his job is to protect them. So his roar can be heard about two miles away and he will roar, walk the territory and let everybody know that that's his area. We also have the tiger. The tiger is from Asia and he's got his beautiful stripes on him. Uh, this is a Bengal tiger and we're very pleased to have him in our collection. Uh, they're very rare, and uh, this one is actually about 50 years old. Most of the animals in our collection are anywhere from 50 to 60 years old. We also have a Cape Buffalo. Cape Buffalo, we have two of those. Um, they're very beautiful, but they're very mean. You don't wanna uh, be caught in a dark alley with those. Um, so you wanna be careful of their horns. And all of these animals that I'm going to show you, a lot of them have ways to protect themselves, whether it's the, the cats with their claws or the antelopes and buffalo with their horns. Um, they all protect themselves in different ways. We also have a leopard. Um, our leopard is sleeping in a tree and he's very uh, beautiful sleeping there. You can see the spots on him. They also reflect a lot of light, and when he's in a tree, the light coming through the leaves is very spotty, and so also that's his camouflage. Looking at him just the way he is, you wouldn't think that it was camouflage, but if he was out in the wild, you would not be able to see him up in the tree. We have a kangaroo, which is from Australia. Our kangaroo is a great um, specimen here and uh, we're pleased to have him. You can notice that he's got his little hands and a lot of times you'll see movies where they're kind of boxing and you can notice that his little fingers kind of um, curl up. Uh, we've also got an ostrich and um, we have a water buck. The water buck um, is uh, a beautiful foal specimen. Again, if you notice his horns, um, those, that is what he uses for protection. Um, so if a lion goes to attack him, the only way that a lion or, or a leopard or tiger, any, any kind of animal that could attack him would be from the, the far end, the rear end, um, because if they come head on with him, they're gonna meet their demise with those horns. Um, in the background, we, you can see a variety of smaller antelopes and these are, we've got a very diversified collection of antelopes from the very small down to the giant eland. And the giant eland, um, we also have a full specimen and then a couple head mounts. Antelopes have a very diversified look. You have the very small ones. You have the heart of beast, which is the one that looks more like a horse. Others have more of a deer look or a goat look. We also have the, the bush diker. We have the little red diker, and these are not um, babies. A lot of people think that they are babies, but they aren't. The African elephant, let's talk about him for just a minute. He is a cast of an actual elephant. If you look at his tusks, his tusks are replicas of the tusks that were from the original elephant and they weighed 110 pounds each. But it gives you a good um, representation of how big that African elephant is. And of course, we've got our beautiful zebra um, with lots of stripes. And the question always is, is he um, black stripes on white or white stripes on black? When the 
um, predators are chasing him, his stripes and all the herd um, make him kind of blend and all of a sudden there's just a ton of stripes and they don't know what they're going after. A very small little uh, cat uh, called the Gannett. Um, this is an African cat, he's very cute. Um, sometimes they might have been um, kept as a little house cat. We also have a beautiful um, giraffe and this is a new specimen for us that we've just received as an acquisition from uh, uh, Cal State Bakersfield and we are very pleased to have George the giraffe um, in our museum. So we also have a warthog and our warthog this guy is a great example you can see just his tusks um, and again, this is kind of a mean animal. You don't want to meet him out there in the wild. Um, in addition to that, we have a lot of artifacts from Africa that have been donated over the years. We have some ceremonial pieces, some ostrich eggs uh, that have scrimshaw on them. Uh, also some uh, ornamental pieces that have been made out of uh, tusks, some carvings out of wood, and some beautiful baskets. In uh, 2000, we were gifted with some uh, beautiful animal specimens. It started with some lions and antelopes, and it grew from there. We are extremely thankful to Mr. Macession, Mr. Thompson, and Mr. McGilvery, and many others who have also donated to this uh, collection over the years. We are very pleased to have these in an up close area where you can actually see the animals. They're not behind glass. They're not 30 feet away from you. You're able to see the claws on the lion. You're able to see the whiskers. One of the other things that the museum does from time to time is sensory safari. This is for people who are visually impaired or um, blind. And that is where we take the barriers down and they are allowed to touch some of the animals to be able to actually feel the size of an animal. We have a very diversified collection here. We hope that you will come and see the full collection, learn a little bit more about all these different animals.